Salwe, and welcome to Legio 14's YouTube channel. In this video, we are going to look at the Vexillum, the military flag of a legion cohort, and vexillations of a legion. But we will focus in on these details later. There were four categories of standards used by the Roman military in the first century AD that we are aware of. The Aquila or Eagle of the Legion, the Imago, this was an image of the Emperor, the Signum, this was one of the unit's identification and signal standards, and finally the Vexillum, the flag of a unit and the focus of this video. So let's begin our in-depth look at the Vexillum. We are going to focus in on the Vexillum of the Legions because that is our main area of study. We will look at cavalry and Praetorian standards briefly as it applies. The Vexillum, like most Roman standards, was a spear pole at its base. Most were topped with spearheads or statues of deities of varying sorts. They likely had butt spikes at the bottom of the spear poles and it's also probable some sported carrying handles as well. The Vexillum was mounted on a transverse bar of either wood or metal. This formed the shape of a small cross. A description on scene 6 and 7 of Trajan's column shows a crossbar ending in rings with leather straps and pendants. Most original finds of Vexillum parts are metal crossbars and their accompanying decorations. There appears to be three distinct styles of Vexillum as portrayed in reliefs. A simple flag hung from a crossbar, sometimes topped with a spearhead, is the first style depicted. The second style features the straps with attached pendants. The third are the very elaborate types topped with eagles, wreaths, various gods, and sometimes even emperors. The only documented surviving Roman vexillum is from the 3rd century AD and is located at the Pushkin Museum of Fine Arts in Moscow. This particular find is a square cloth made out of linen with the goddess Victory painted on it. It is 47 centimeters high and 50 centimeters wide, or 18 and a half inches high and 20 inches wide. Another unpublished find exists, but the details are unknown. Evidence from the only published original find and reliefs of varying types point to a roughly square cloth. These vexillums seem to measure anywhere from 30 centimeters to 60 centimeters square, or 12 inches to 24 inches, respectively. The bottoms of the vexillums are often fringed as depicted in several reliefs and stels. The only documented colors are red, purple, and blue with golden borders. These were often elaborately embroidered. Literary sources outside of the few mentioned don't have too much information to help our case. We can see the legion name depicted on this relief of Legio II Augustus along the Antonine Wall. Now let's look more in depth at some of the other depictions of vexillums. There are several coins depicting vexilla in a military context. You can see many of the surviving examples here. Symbols often seem to be painted or embroidered on vexilla. There is documentation for the Capricorn, which was the symbol for Legio 14. Evidence also points to bulls, victory as in the existing fine, eagles, and Jupiter, just to name a few. Some tombstones or stels feature standout depictions of a vexilla. Several reliefs from Trajan's column show varying styles of them as well. And of course, we have the only documented find from Egypt, as previously discussed. Now let's look at the uses of the vexillum. I wish we could say with confidence that we knew all the exact uses, but the historical evidence does not present enough absolutes for us to be certain in all cases. We do know, however, according to Tacitus, that it was an identifying standard of a legion, as some surviving reliefs show a legion name and number on them. Was the vexillum present only at the legion level, 
or was it used to identify cohorts or centuries as well? Let's look at the details. We do know there are documented Praetorian vexilla present on Trajan's column and the Great Trajanic Frieze. The largest unit in the Praetorian Guard was a cohort, so it's safe to assume the vexillum was present at the cohort level too amongst the legions. We do know from Caesar's writings and later sources that vexillations, which were detachments from the main body or legion, were sent out on various tasks. It is confirmed by our sources by the name Vexillation that they marched out under a separate Vexillum from the main legion. This properly identifies them as a Vexillation of a specific legion. It also appears from our sources that cavalry units carried their own Vexilla as well. These were for the most part of the simpler design as mentioned before. Finally, we will look at the standard bearer of the Vexillum, called the Vexillarius. The evidence points to the Vexillarius's presence in the Legion as a rank and also possibly at the cohort level too. He was definitely an active role among the Praetorian Guard and cavalry units as well. A vexillarius would also have been a rank or role in vexillations. Whether temporary or permanent, we do not know. This would most likely depend on the situations. We know the rank existed in larger units, such as a legion and cohort, and large vexillations. But when it came to small detachments, such as a century or two, it could have been a temporary role of certain soldiers to carry the vex. Hopefully someday more evidence is found to confirm even more details about this exciting rank or role in the Roman army. It is worth noting that Vexillum were also given out to equestrian and senatorial officers as rewards. In conclusion, the Vexillum was a staple standard used by the Roman army. Much evidence exists depicting it in use. However, we continue to strive to learn more about this exciting topic. We hope you enjoyed this in-depth look at the Roman Vexillum. Thank you, and we will see you in the next video.